You're looking at the most famous and well-traveled couch in America. The places it's been seen and the people it's been seen with make it a unique object in the history of photography. Now, the question is, why would anyone want to drag a huge red couch like this around the country just to make a photograph? The red couch functions as an element of continuity in each of the photographs. And when you show someone the series of images, they understand the kind of visual logic of this couch being in each and every photograph. They also could see that they were being woven into a larger story. Each and every photograph was approached in such a way that that photograph should stand on its own. That you, you know, someone could have one photograph from the red couch series, and that, ca that photograph would say, this is the basis of the project. That, in a way, the images are uh, documents of a kind of theatrical happening that occurred in a certain time in a certain place. Some of the places that we photographed with the red couch were at the, uh, the launch of the Columbia 2 space shuttle with NASA, uh, with the dancers Merce Cunningham in his studio, or Fernando Bujones from the American Ballet Theater in a different studio, uh, on location at the 70th floor of the Atlanta Peachtree Plaza Hotel with the window washer. This is the world's tallest hotel, and Jim's out there every day on a scaffold. We spent two days rigging the couch onto the scaffold so it would be completely safe. But when it came to making the shot, Jim wanted to clamber out of board with, uh, without his harness. So I said, Jim, we don't need any heroes here. Just put on your harness and let's do it. What makes this project different than a lot of uh, projects where one goes into America to make photographs is that this is photographed with a large format uh, camera the very, with a 5 by 7 inch film size. That required our setting up strobe equipment, flash, fill light, using cards to bounce light into very large uh, picture frame areas. Um, we shot Polaroids. We used a lot of flash. Uh, they were very complicated setups. And they were basically, it was like doing still life photography on location. The portraits of people on location with a complex studio setup and a large format camera, 5 by 7 inch. The photograph at Mendenhall Glacier in Alaska is now on the cover of the soft cover edition of the book. That was photographed by placing the couch this, in this archetypal, uh, almost lunar landscape. It's the glacier itself in Alaska. And we placed it on top of, the, uh, of a canoe. And the man rowed out. The, the couch functioned pretty much as a stabilizing force. I mean, it, it stabilized, the couch stabilized the canoe much as a, a baton does a trapeze artist or a, a tightrope walker. It's important for the amateur at home to know that, that some element of the photograph should be prominent, that it could be just the face, it can be the person in an environment, it could be the car, it could be someone sitting in a chair, it could be a runner, but there should be, it, it helps to have one element within the composition which gives it a certain force or weight or volume and provides three-dimensionality. This is mostly wide-angle photography. And in wide-angle photography, whatever's in the foreground is going to dominate the image. What you have in the background will help illustrate the foreground. Uh, we use this wide-angle approach because the elements in the background were so very important in illustrating and defining who that person is in the foreground, sitting on the couch or leaping over it or interacting with it. When you ask the question, why use this red couch, the only answer that can be given is, look at the photographs, look at the book. Because there you see that it has its own, it makes its own sense. 